Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another Not List, aka an episode of These Things Suck. And at the time of recording, it is the end of 2021, and likely when this video comes out, it'll be the beginning of 2022. So at this point, I'm stuck in this nexus of time, and I think to myself, it is at once a moment to be hopeful for the future, but also to look back on the past events of this year and recollect and remind ourselves of things that have happened. And it has definitely been a strange year indeed, but I am being reminded about one thing in particular, and that is trophies and achievements that absolutely take the fucking piss. Because while you might not think it, even completing the most minor real-life task is going to be better than the absolute video game garbage that we'll be covering today. For while each of these air quotes trophies presented themselves as a reward for players, each was an exercise in frustration, an utter time sink, a convoluted mess to unlock, or even worse, all of the above. So buckle up, my friends, as we're about to learn some hard truths today, or one in particular, and that is that sometimes video game rewards just are not worth the effort. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these video game achievements suck. Normally, the Neverwinter Nights games would rarely grace this absolute um, cesspit of a video series, but today I am going to be taking the Neverwinter MMORPG to task because of the fact that there is an absolute stinker of a trophy tied to it, and I can do so with a kind of clear conscience, because even though the other games in this series are made with such love and care that it's actually very uncommon to find that amount of effort put in in the current video game climate, the MMORPG well, it's slightly different, but I'll tell you why for two reasons. The first being that Neverwinter isn't actually considered to be a standalone game and sits apart from the mainline entry, so I don't feel as bad ragging on it. And secondly, because the Dragon's Bane achievement is a total boil of fizzy piss that it needs to be lanced out of existence. Now, dragons, as you might expect in this game, are no pushover whatsoever, and Neverwinter tasks you with slaying 1,000 of the f***ers in order to pop this trophy. Now I can hear you, you might be saying to yourself, Jules, Jules, you pale, oh so very pale goblin of a man, why are you creating such a fuss? MMORPGs and grinding go together like Resident Evil Village and their fans wanting to be stepped on, it's just what you do. Now be a good little cud muncher and go out there and farm yourself some dragon skin boots. Well, to that, I would say, aside from the very hurtful style of your message, while this trophy does sound simple to unlock, requiring just a shed load of your time, it's actually much more of a pain in the scrum thanks to the game itself actively trying to work against you at every bloody turn. And by this, I mean that for some weird reason, the title doesn't track how many dragons you've actually killed, meaning that you could be 563 dragons deep and not have a single clue as to how many more you've got to go, which kills any sense of investment you might have in the process. You might even begin to drive yourself mad thinking, surely I have killed a thousand dragons by now, surely I've done this, and you look to the game and you're like, surely I've done this by now, and the game just apathetically shrugs and just goes, maybe, maybe not, why didn't you kill some more and find out, mate? <laughs> Better hope the trophy's not f***ing bug day. Eh? It's not, is it? Nah, don't worry about that, it actually does work. But we don't know how many you've killed though, so keep on killing. Hey. I do not know how, but this trophy makes the act of slaying mythical dragons absolutely boring. And worse still, remember this is an MMORPG, meaning that you're very likely to be aiming to net this trophy as a group, and the game only tracks kills if you manage to do enough damage to one before it gets taken out. Meaning that you could well be thinking yourself as being Johnny Dragon Slayer, but in reality you're just, I don't know, Timmy Lizard Puncher. Hell, you might even be Bobby Newt Tickler, if anything. Add to this the fact that the only reasonable way to farm dragons will see you repeating a quest 500 times and will take you over 70 hours to get it and you can see why Bane is truly apt for this title, as this is a true exercise in annoyance. Okay, so not too harsh on any one person in particular, but if you, yes, you watching this video, have unlocked the Seriously or Seriously 2.0 or Seriously 3.0 achievement line from the Gears of Boy, Gears of Boy, Gears of Boy franchise, I'm not going to carry on, the Gears of Boy franchise, then you, my friend, have a problem. 
a bigger problem than trying to say Gears of War, apparently. <laughs> You see, the Xbox 360 was still in its infancy and just playing around with the very concept of Cheeves when it was launched and was just having fun rewarding players for finding secrets or going that little bit extra to unlock them. Yet when Gears of War barreled down the way, it utterly beat the concept to death with its own bloody hype pipe. Hype 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 the hype pipe for kids. You see, with the birth of the Seriously achievement, which was popped by killing 10,000 people in ranked matches, came the rise of the Are You Actually F***ing Kidding Me trophy line selection. You know the ones I'm on about, the ones that require huge investments of time to the point that collecting just one of them meant that gamers would have spent nothing other than playing this game for that year. And here's the thing, these trophies aren't fun for anyone involved. It is an absolute chore to unlock them and nobody enjoys the grind on that level. And if you do unlock them, it's not even fun to parade around in front of your friends because all it does is attract ire and comments of, really, you actually spent all that time? That was a waste of your life, mate. What, what are you doing? No one cares, no one cares. So I ask you, what's the fucking point? With Gears taking this meme chief and upping it with every iteration, the time investment only grew and grew to unlock them, to the point now where it's killed its own joke stone dead and we're just praying that they stop as soon as possible. It's less of the hype pipe and now it's more of the gripe pipe. Gripe, 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 Six hours. That's how long it takes to unlock this one trophy. And I know that it might not seem like that much. You might be rolling up your sleeves and thinking to yourself, well, it is time to strap on the plastic guitars, my friend, and grow out my hair or my mustache. Or if you're a bassist, start instantly resenting the fact that you've had your bass solos pre-cut from the project that you're about to work on. But stop, my friend. I have tried to get this achievement many, many times over. I am here as a warning message to many things in life, but this in particular, do not even f***ing bother. You see, the Bladder of Steel achievement is an utter friendship ruiner in trophy form, and will only pop for those who manage to complete the endless set list 2 on Rock Band 2 without failing or pausing. So that six hours that I mentioned before, that is in one go, without breaks, perfectly completing every every single song. That is nearly a full working day just playing one game with such laser precision that you don't even ever think about gracing that bloody pause button. And trust me, small costly mistakes will happen. Just ask my parents. But um sure. It was worth a double roll on that one. And I f***ed it up because of that. I would have failed the endless set list just on that. I missed a note. Accidentally pausing, bigging up the fact that you can complete all of the songs on Expert only to stack it during a mid-session solo and tank the team, and of course my personal favourite, forgetting the song Visions was on the tracklist until it showed up and every member of my friends started apologising in unison. That's what I met about five hours deep. I was a tired boy. Did not enjoy this. Mm, 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 Sonic 2. Mm, mm, no. Mm, mm. <laughs> this achievement. Fuck it. I'm really angry now. Ooh. Right, I'm gonna level with you. I don't actually play video games to 100% them anymore. I kind of gave up on that a long, long time ago and would prefer instead to leave that to the true sadists of this world like Gerard the Completionist. You have at that, mate. That is for you. Daddy is picking up that check. But the thing is, it's not that I don't enjoy the games that I play and don't want to see them through to full completion or explore all of their little secret nooks and crannies. It's just that I take a look at the current gaming industry as it is today and I think to myself, this is going to be a headache. This is basically offering up your forehead to an ice pick that is going to be driven through it by the developers and saying, thank you, may I have another. Are you confused? Well, let me explain. Think about it this way. Back in the day, a video game would drop with a fixed amount of trophies and that would be a lot. But with the ever-increasing presence of games as a live service and titles that land with season passes and DLC roadmaps that just f***ing extend out into the distance, it all means just one thing. That achievement list that you are looking at at launch is not etched in stone and that countless more will be added across the title's tenure. Now, all of this translates into an experience that gets harder and harder to 100% and in some cases becomes impossible to do so thanks to online servers shutting down with trophies that are tied to that component. You might even have your goalposts moved by expansions that you just don't want to pay for or don't even find appealing in the slightest, and it can end up feeling very overwhelming indeed. 
Therefore, I guess you could say that this is less me wielding my gripe pipe for one specific achievement and more the concept of achievements as they stand in the current gaming industry as a whole. With nobody drawing the line and with so many achievements being added on for so many games, you just think to yourself, what's the bloody point? Games as a live service is games as a fucking life sentence. Okay, so brace yourselves. We're going to be talking about an absolute stinker right now. Uh, and it's from an otherwise really brilliant game, by the way. Final Fantasy XII, Mistwalker Achievement. If that sends a shudder through your spine, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't... <laughs> oh boy, we're going to have a fun time. <laughs> This is quite possibly the worst achievement I've ever come across, ever. And no, this isn't hyperbole, as it combines some of the worst aspects of not just trophy unlocking, but also of video games in general. Now on paper, the goal is simple. Namely, that you have to perform every concurrence move in the game, which is a special flourish attack that you can dish out to opponents once you've finished a character's special attack, which here is called a quickening. However, what should be a delicious cherry on the thick ass cake of a beatdown that you've just administered turns instead to be a rotten egg pelted at the back of your head, forcing you to fall over into a very hefty dish of humble pie. Because this, my friend, is a nightmare of achievement and will see you licking the boots at the heel of the god of RNG. Oh yeah, it's RNG time, baby. You see, first you're going to have to unlock these quickenings for each character, which means getting on a grind so hard that it might erode your very soul. Then, once unlocked, you'll notice that you've also accrued some mist charges. These are consumables that you spend in order to perform the quickenings in battle, and they can and will run out. But more on that in a bit, because if I think about it right now, I might pass out too soon from a sheer rage. So you've got your moves, and in battle, you can select quickenings from the battle menu and begin your flashy set of flourishes. Now, at the end of these, you're given the chance to chain quickenings with other party members, something that you'll need to do because some concurrence final moves are locked behind certain chains, such as performing three level one quickenings or two level one quickenings and two level two quickenings in the same chain. Hell, the final concurrence move, Black Hole, sees you having to chain together every quickening in one chain. There are four for each character and four people that you can switch between in your party. Is your head starting to hurt yet? <laughs> oh, because there's more! Because get this, you don't get to decide which quickenings you perform as these are randomized, and each move requires mischarges to activate which can be depleted and the option to fill them again is also randomized. Oh yes, and by the way, you're on a f***ing timer. Oh man, I tell you what, if this was a drink, this is what it would be. You take a hefty slug of absolute time wasting, you dash in some randomized bitters, and then you garnish it with what can only be described as the spit of the developers hitting your face and sliding into the glass. Drink it up, because this trophy will break you. Oh. And there we go, my friends. That was another not list, aka an episode of These Things Suck. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, and you can follow Joe over here as well for his handles right there. I never really plug your stuff, Joe, and I need to do that more because you are an integral part of this team. Let's go into 2022. Absolutely kick his ass. Just kick his ass so much that it's just organs come out of its mouth. Gross but positively gross. And speaking of positivity, you might notice, by the way, I'm not an angry person in real life. I don't like holding on to anger, so I urge you to treat yourself with love and compassion to keep those levels nice and low, my friend. Go out there with love in your heart instead of hate and build bridges instead of burning them because all I want for you is to live a healthy and happy life. Go out there and absolutely smash it with positivity. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.